What is going on Interceptors? This is Chino and welcome to another Anthem video. Well I have to say I have been playing Anthem the entire early access period and I have been having an absolute blast despite the fact that there have been a few problems uh, early launch and uh, they have looked at a lot of these problems by the way and the day one patch which just came out in the last 24 hours has fixed a lot of the bugs and issues that were actually out there and spoken about all over the forums and things like that. So um, hats off to Bioware for really getting on top of that. There were a lot of, um, I guess you could say slight problems that sort of added up to become a major issue in terms of the total gameplay experience. But anyway, we're not here to really talk about how good the game is. We're here to talk about the maneuvering capabilities of each of the javelins and uh, how to make the most of those and how to utilize moving around as fast as possible between locations. So we are actually going to start off with the Interceptor and the reason why we're going to do this is because the Interceptor is not only the most complicated in terms of the way it maneuvers and moves around but it's also the most agile and capable and versatile um, in the way it moves around. So if we start with the Interceptor um, I'm also going to show you the Ranger and then I'm going to show you the Storm as well but I'm not going to bring too much into the Colossus and this is simply because there's not a lot to the Colossus movement system being a big tanky unit uh, there's not a lot to really learn in regards to how to get from one location to the other um, so let's start off by talking about the jumping as, a, as an interceptor you always want to be sprinting on the ground um, now the great thing about Anthem is that sprint is completely unlimited so while you're on the ground you pretty much always want to be sprinting this is your run and it's just the standard run and this is your basic uh, holding the directional pad or the WK forward and this is your sprint so the reason why we want to sprint all the time in terms of maneuverability obviously is that we're running faster and we're getting from place to place faster but also when you jump you jump further and higher when you're sprinting so you always want to be sprinting and as an interceptor you have three jumps available and the way the jump works with the interceptor is you can hold the jump and get to the maximum peak possible so that's what you would want to do with the first jump so sprint first jump and hold it and then to do the double jump you want to hold it and then at the peak press it again and to do the triple jump it's literally just throw another jump on top of that hold it jump jump and all of a sudden we've gone all of that distance without using our jetpacks at all without using any overheating or anything like that so now the other air maneuverability that is available um, and especially to the interceptor are dodges. Air dodges are something that not only um, is something that you need to utilize in the game in order to survive as an interceptor but also it helps you in terms of getting from location to location faster and also keeping the air for the maximum period of time you can without overheating. So uh, once again we're going to do triple jump one two three and then we'll go into what I like to call the triple dash and that is honestly just holding the dash button in the air, the direction you want to go, which is forward if you want to go faster, and you will do all three. Now if you are dodging and you're trying to avoid taking damage, you can still hold the dodge button and change directions in between each dodge. So I'll just show you now, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'll do it again because that wasn't really great. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. So I can sort of go in any direction. And um, while you are flying forward, just like this, you can hold left or right as like a strafe and then use the dodge button to do a barrel roll as the interceptor. Um, now, in order to reset those dodges, because you only get three, one, two, three, we, f we start flying. And then, funnily enough, what we actually do is a melee ability. So right now, if you do an air melee ability, this is the action you will get. And it's, you know, really fancy looking, a sort of barrel roll spiral ninja type of ability. 
and um, it actually does a decent amount of damage and just like the standard melee ability that's a detonator move as well but what matters and the reason why i'm showing this to you in terms of movement is because it actually resets your dodges so one two three we can hit the melee and then we can actually reset the melee animation by using the dodge again one two three and we'll go up here now if i use melee one two three and then fly again melee one two three and then fly again melee one two three and then fly again and you see how not only how much distance i'm covering without overheating but also how fast i'm actually moving in that forward momentum and this is actually the fastest way to get from one location to the other in anthem between all of the javelins and if you use this effectively, even in boss fights or world events and things like that, you will actually be able to maneuver yourself around the battlefield really, really cleanly, and you'll take a lot less damage as well. And you can sort of break this up by doing things like one jump, one, two, three, one jump again. Well, I'll, I'll do it again. <laughs> so it's one jump, one, two, three, double jump, one, two, three, fly melee one two three fly and all those sorts of things so this is the best way to move around as an interceptor and like i said it's also the fastest way now the other thing i'm going to show you is the actual heat bar and as you can see right now there's a bar just below the javelin and it's blue at the moment now the reason why it's blue is because we are cooled and you can see just on the left hand side there that i've got the buff that says cooled now what cooled actually means is that your engines are cooled and you're not overheating as quick um, now this also happens if you happen to be above water and hovering sort of just above water or flying just above water as well your um your engines will remain cooled They'll just slowly heat up as time goes on. You can see how that's blue. Now, if this wasn't raining and I was flying sort of just up here, then you would see that heat up dramatically faster. And this is why using the melee and the dodges is actually essential to getting longer distances in between locations because you're not actually using your jetpacks for all those dodges that much. You're just sort of touching on them and um, you won't have to land as often in order to cool down your engines to keep going. All right, so let's have a look at one of the other, other javelins. And like I said, I'm not really gonna show you the Colossus today, but I am gonna show you other ways to maneuver faster as a storm and as a ranger as well. Let's jump straight in. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna show you some extra statistics that you can grab in order to boost your ability to fly, stay in the air, um, overheat a little less frequently and all of those sorts of things. The first thing I'm going to bring to your attention are the craftables, um, the, the actual consumables that you take before you jump into your expeditions. This is a heat sigil and the heat sigil will give you 10% extra heat capacity for your javelin. Every rarity that goes up, it will go up another 10%. So if we move down to the epic version of this, the heat sigil gives you 30% extra heat capacity um, and this has to be crafted every single time you head into an expedition um, and you know this is obviously why they're called consumables because they do consume once you have finalized your expedition so um, that's one way to get some extra stats in there and I will say that it's probably not um, your best way to spend your components unless you have a really really large number of components to waste um, I think that going for things like extra damage or extra survivability is probably a lot better. Uh, but it, like I said, if you are having troubles with the actual moving system or you, you want a little bit more, you know, hovering capabilities in a, in a battle um, or whatever it might be, then this is the way to go about doing it. So heading out of this now, and we're going to just jump into the forge really quickly. And I'm going to show you some of the stats that can come from random rolls on actual loot components themselves. So these are components and, um, you know, much like your consumables, as you level up your pilot, you're going to get access to more slots for these components. And um, there are a couple of different ways to get stats and a couple of different types of stats that you can get um, from your components. So first of all, um, here's your heat sink. This is kind of the um, permanent version of the craftables that we just looked at. 
but on an epic level it only gives you 10% of the heat capacity but on top of this you also get your random stats on the bottom as well so these are your random roll stats and if you choose the heat sink you're going to get definitely get that 10% heat capacity um, added to your javelin so these things kind of start to um, stack on top of each other so now I'm going to show you a couple of the other stats that you can get that affect your your movement just bear with me I've got to find it for you <laughs> Um, oh, here we go. Here's one. So the first random stat, random roll stat, is 20% extra thruster life. So pretty obvious of what that is. Um, your thruster life bar will have an extra 20% added to it. It's kind of like a 20% max. So that that's really handy if you are looking for extra stats for movement. Um, there are, I think, two more different stats that I've seen. Here's one. This is thruster percent speed. So this one's a little confusing because as far as Anthem is concerned from what I could tell, the actual percent speed stat has always been relative to actual refresh speed, nothing else, all about that ability refreshing faster. So in that sense, I have to believe that the 6% speed is not about actual movement speed, but it's more about the refresh speed. But that could be uh, it could be incorrect. It could actually be thruster speed, but I'm pretty confident that that's what it, that's what it is. Um, and then on top of that, you get overheat delay. So this is a 13% removal um, of the overheat. So uh, the good thing is that uh, I think this adds to once you fill up your heat bar, um, it helps you by slowing down the ability to overheat and 13%. So you can imagine all of this sort of adding up on a javelin that really has difficulty and there's a 15% delay. Um, but overall, these are the sorts of stats that you can find within your components as well as your crafted consumables uh, in order to gain extra stats for movement. Okay, so onto the Ranger now, and um, first thing that's very different about the Ranger to the Interceptor is that you only get a double jump, you don't get a triple jump. Um, the Ranger has a really nice... Um, the Ranger has a really nice standard jump, as you can see. So holding it actually gets you pretty high, and then the second jump, if you hold it again, gets you pretty high again, but there's not gonna be a third jump available. So already there is something tying you a little bit closer to the ground or preventing you from spending as much time in the air when comparing to the Interceptor. The other thing is the air dodge available on the Ranger is actually only one dodge. Um, so as you can see, it is technically, it's only that one dodge. And although you can still reset it by doing your melee ability in the air, and uh, on the Ranger the melee ability is quite good because it does go for a pretty fast and uh, nice lengthy direction, just like that. So it's got a pretty good direction, and when you're actually fighting foes, it does help you if you target them to sort of stay in a good direction. But if you use it for a reset option, so we're going to do the same as we did with the Interceptor. Alright, so starting up here again. So again, sprint, high jump, second jump, dash, fly, melee, dash, fly, melee, dash, fly. And the, the barrel roll on the Ranger is a little bit slower, but it moves a little bit further overall. Just like that. So again, melee, dash, fly. So you can still continue to do this because the melee will consistently reset the dodge. And you are using a lot less heat capacity in order to do it like this. Um, what's very different about the actual melee ability on the Ranger compared to the other javelins as well is that it's actually a primer rather than being a detonator like all the other three javelins actually have for their melee ability. So that's just something that's a, I know, a little bit unique about the Ranger. Just something to throw into the, to the midst of this little tutorial. But at the end of the day, if you want to know about the best way to maneuver and move as the Ranger, 
then you just need to make the most of the reset functionality just like that and you will be set to go. The Ranger has a pretty decent heat capacity um, but is a little bit slower in terms of it, the maneuverability. The dashes aren't quite as fast but uh, the melee ability is very strong and it's a primer um, if you decide that you want to actually stay in that animation. Um, it hits pretty hard and um, when you're in a team combat scenario priming your enemies with that melee ability is very very effective especially when they're throwing de re detonators on them left right and center. Okay let's move on to the storm because uh, the storm again is quite unique and um, I think it's with the storm it's important to take advantage of uh, the systems that the storm has in place not only for movement but also for defense. Let me show you how that works. Okay over to the storm. Now the storm is actually quite unique. Uh, when you sprint with the storm, it actually turns into this hover animation that you're seeing here. That doesn't make it necessarily slower or faster. It's roughly the same as the other javelins. Well, probably not as fast as the interceptor, but it's probably roughly the, the same speed as what you would see with the ranger. And um, I actually think it, it's a really cool looking animation. The thing about the storm is, and this is something that you need to understand if you want to play the storm, um, into the end game is that when you actually hover with the storm like this you read what it says there your shield is amplified and takes reduced damage while you are hovering so this actually means that this is your best position in combat so you need to know how to be able to maneuver yourself around in terms of combat and keep yourself into this hover position as often as possible so I know this um, this video is mostly about sort of moving around and, and getting from location to location quickly but uh, this is a really important aspect in terms of mastering the storm's movement capabilities so when you're actually sitting into this hover position you can side dash um, or sort of strafe dash left and right similar to what you would get if you're flying forward and you choose the barrel roll as the storm a lot of the dash capabilities and dodge capabilities actually turn into what is effectively looking like a blink um, which is honestly animation wise looks really really nice some nice particle effects to go with it um, but I, I actually think that it's roughly the same in terms of the barrel roll that you get from the um, the interceptor and the ranger and how well it actually does dodge the opponent's uh, weapons and, and abilities so when you're hovering you can strafe dash left and right while you're in hover and this will get you out of a lot of scenarios say for example a sniper's got you locked in or a turret's got you locked in or you're taking heated damage from um, another enemy that is almost breaking your shield down so th the great thing about using this rather than flying and using this is that because you're in hover mode you will effectively take less damage leaving or just before you leave into this dodge mechanic and when you land into the dodge mechanic as well so it's a it's it's a pretty good idea that when you're in an actual fight that you really want to sit, situate yourself in a position where you can see your enemies kind of from above or on an equal level but also that within reach there's something to duck behind and get behind cover um, this is important for not only um, line of sight of your enemy and if you've again if you've got turrets or snipers looking at you you want to be able to line of sight them behind a tree or a or a rock or some kind of object that's going to protect you um, but it's also important too if you're overheating and again as you can see we're sitting in the rain and we're above water so our systems are severely cooled at the moment but in combat um, even though the storm has the ability to hover for extended periods of time without overheating you're still going to overheat from time to time especially if you are taking fire damage and with fire damage um, much like the opposite effect of water you will overheat a lot faster and you will need to hit the ground pretty quick so while you're on the ground again the dash is or the, sorry the sprint is a sort of hovering looking animation but also if you choose to do a ground dash or dodge you will do that blinking effect on the ground you can do this going forward you can do this going forward in a jump and there you go and you can also do this while flying there you go um, and much like the ranger and the interceptor your best bet is to do the maximum number of jumps you can and in the storm's instance it is the double jump and again the storm the longer you hold the jump the higher the peak will be so there's your high jump there's your second jump which is more like a hover or an extension of the actual jump in a very sort of 
well controlled directional area and um, then on top of that you've got your dash so you want to do the same combination that we just did with the ranger you want to sprint do a double jump do your dodge fly melee dodge fly melee dodge fly and you want to continue that action and this is definitely your best way at getting yourself the further or the furthest you can without overheating but also getting to your location as fast as possible so the thing to remember is the melee ability on the ground is just a just a standard animation like that and when you're actually sprinting it does the same thing but if you're in the air it always vanishes and it's actually quite fast if you, if you aim it towards your target it's actually quite fast but it's got a very slight cooldown. It never used to have a cooldown, um, but it does now. It's got a very slight cooldown, so that's something to keep in mind. But you can always use it in sort of any order that you see fit. As long as you're resetting that dodge with the actual melee ability. And then that's the best way to move around as a storm. And again, Melee, dodge, melee, dodge, there's your barrel roll, which doesn't even look like a barrel roll, but it's kind of a, it's a strafe dodge, melee dodge, and then yeah, there's your melee right there. Alright, well that's going to do it for the storm, and that's going to actually do it for this video. I hope this video has been helpful for you to understand the way the movement system works, and I hope you guys are enjoying the game, especially those of you who are finally able to jump in to the full version of the game as of the 22nd, uh, especially if you didn't have access to that early access period or any of the demo weekends. Um, probably expect for a few more videos to come out in terms of basic tutorials, but then I'm also going to show videos um, as to how to much more effectively farm for masterwork here um, and there'll be a lot of build videos coming out in the next I would say oh, week to two weeks there'll be quite a few coming out as well so keep an eye on the channel and if you did enjoy today's video I would really appreciate if you left a like because I do put a bit of effort into these videos and it really does help the channel and myself a lot and on top of that if you want to see more of my anthem content going forward then click on the subscribe icon and uh, click on the bell icon if you want to get notifications when I'm uploading all my new content to the channel well it's finally here I'm seeing a little bit of uh, lag on the on the servers but it seems to be quite stable and I'm impressed with it what are you guys thinking about how you're enjoying anthem so far are you thinking you're going to continue playing are you excited for guilds coming next month I know I am because this game doesn't necessarily feel as social as I hope it would have and uh, hopefully that brings a lot more of a social aspect into the game especially when it comes to playing Grandmaster Anyway, that's going to do it from me for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.